Well, what can I say? It has been a very crazy start of the year for me because, as some of you know, I've not been very well because I have coronavirus. Obviously, the symptoms are a little bit um, different and varies person to person. Mine were a mixture, really, of uh, cold light symptoms, flu symptoms. I had body ache. Um, I had severe um, body fatigue, like really, really horrific headaches to the point that were making me feel sick. Obviously, the fever was crazy because... Um, I mean, I just couldn't sleep. I was waking up in pools of sweat, but then feeling ridiculously cold, um, very shivery. I mean, I'm still feeling quite shivery and cold now. Smell and taste. I can't smell or taste anything. And it's really annoying because, well, it just doesn't really give me much appetite to eat things that I usually like to eat because I can't taste them. But I'm very grateful that I've had Michael He's a blessing, honest to gosh, because, I don't know, the last couple of days my brain hasn't been functioning um, very well at my body, and it has made me feel very down, and, yeah, he's been amazing, because he's just, um, you know, been very patient, listened, been behind, and been checking. Uh, so... Yeah, it's been tough. Um, all sorts of crazy symptoms. Um, you know, the coughing and the phlegm and the chest pain, which f makes you feel a little bit um, congested as a whole, but it does give you a little bit of a problems breathing. Um, followed now by a rash, a rash um, all over my body. I don't know if you can see that. I mean, it's pretty bad around my legs. I went my poor legs, my goodness. I mean, even my hand is so much better. My right hand is the worst because obviously I'm using it a little bit more. But anything it comes in contact with, it's just so painful and very itchy and just a combination. I mean, I'm trying not to touch or itch because I don't want to make it worse. Um, but yeah, it's been a great, great couple of days apart from that, um, to be honest, because I'm in my lovely warm home, you know, I've got a lovely bed, I've got a hot shower that I can have, a hot bath whenever I want to have one, I've got lots of food, um, and I've got Michael. Michael is nursing me back to health, and yeah, it's going to be okay. Um, I just feel for people out there that are going through this and literally have zero to no resources, I'm also... Um, making sure that I'm taking, I don't really want to highlight what I'm taking to help me because I know there's a lot of conflicting things out there and I don't want people to think that I'm trying to say, oh, I've got the cure for corona, I'm taking the classic supplements that I always take, you know, um, zinc, magnesium, vitamin D, uh, vitamin C overdosing, a lot of vitamin C overdosing, which I, I usually do anyway when I get sick or I'm feeling unwell, looked into other things as well. Um, which I'm not going to get into a lot because I know there's a lot of crazy things out there and I don't want people to, again, take any of this stuff if they haven't researched or done um, any reading up on it. Unfortunately, the last couple of days, my appetite has been so bad um, to the point where I think the last thing I ate was maybe three days ago um, and it made me feel sick. I wanted to vomit. Uh, so after that, I thought, let me just see what my body is telling me to do because there's been a couple of times where I have not eaten when I've been ill or had a fever and it's helped me massively. Um, as you know, I fast for various reasons and one of the main reasons is because while you fast, you allow your body to have a break from digestion to aid in cell repairing. Um, so I kind of thought of that and thought, right, let me listen, if I'm hungry, 100% Maria, eat. If the thought of eating is making you sick, then obviously don't. So that is what I've been doing for the last two days. I've not eaten. 
I have kept my hydration super high. Uh, I believe I'm drinking about four or five liters, maybe a little bit more. We do have some Zoom sessions today, however, because once I get moving, I feel like I'm a little bit more myself and I just wanna start feeling that rather than feeling low. So I'm back on Zoom. Yeah, I'm gonna have a cup of tea I'm going to give myself five seconds just to relax and zone in and be ready to go. But I 100%, I appreciate all the messages I've been getting on WhatsApp, my DMs on Instagram and people that I don't even know that have just randomly thought about me and thought to message me and ask me if I'm okay because I've not posted a single story or a single post um, this whole year. <laughs> I know it's only been a couple of days into the year, but I haven't said a, a, a single thing. Um, my priority right now really is my health. And then second to that is my calls. Um, and then my clients, you know, I need to make sure that they're all getting the support that they need. Um, and yeah, I hope that everyone's okay and feeling okay. I know we're in tier four and most places are very very restricted in what they can do and the gyms are closed and it's a difficult time for everyone but I hope that you will find comfort in your circumstance in whatever way you can whether that's in the fact that you've got a roof over your head or you're with your friends or you're with your family but just um yeah stay positive and let's go Sorry I'm making these faces, so I've got this crazy amount of itching, burning pain coming from my legs. It's, it's crazy. I should get out of bed actually, because it's pretty bad. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you what I've got in my kitchen. It's not a very big kitchen, because as you will see, it literally is from this section here, which is coffee machine, blender, the grill, some fruit and then lots of jars of all the bits and pieces that I use and then just a little spice rack area here and this is where all the magic happens. So there's not a lot going on so we're not going to go crazy. The only thing I did want to show you is also in my fridge but I don't have a lot of food in which is a good thing actually because it's not going to overcomplicate things and I don't want to scare anyone um, so yeah. Everyone does ask what are in these jars. Basically, I buy all my food pretty much online unless it's fresh produce because most of it is organic and if I buy it in bulk, either on real food source or whole foods online, it tends to be a little bit more cost effective and it's better than buying small portions wrapped in plastic, in more plastic, in more boxes and in more plastic. So... These are little things like puff quinoa, hemp seeds, nutritional yeast, mixed nuts. Um, we've got some quinoa there at the back, all the types of lentils, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds. Um, we've got some chia seeds, sultanas, um, black rice, uh, some more lentils. I think that is coconut flour because I love baking. And um, we've got goji berries. Oh, I love goji berries and dark chocolate buttons because those are amazing for baking and just to eat in general, straight out of the jar. Guilty. And then we've got desiccated coconut, and I believe this is coconut sugar for baking and some cacao powder. And in this little cupboard is our porridge slash coffee tea cupboard. Um, lots of tea, all the different types of teas, um, yeah. I just love tea in general. Uh, we've got a massive tub of peanut butter. I do also have some almond butter also from the real food source, which is really nice. Just clean, simple, no added sugar, no added oil, no flour, nothing crazy. Um, and then we've got things like um, these nice porridge or cereal toppers, your classic chock shop. <laughs> Some BP and me powdered peanut butter, really good for when you want to make something um, baked or even just to make a nice dip, even for savoury dishes, quite good. Um, some dark chocolate there. Oh, I'm running low on my dark chocolate stack. But up here we've got all the porridge. Um, wow, well, apparently two tubs of hot chocolate. And some tea, some more coffee, lots of milk options and some more chock shot and some stevia this stuff is amazing by the way definitely recommend uh, 
These are all the freaking spaghettis that I keep on going on about. Um, yeah, from Lidl or Aldi, you can get them from both. They're amazing. They're like a pound 30 and they're really good protein as well as being OG, organic. Like agar agar, just to make things uh, thicken up. Really good to have, handy. Too soft, silken, smooth. Really good to make sauces and things. Definitely a must. Um, and things like chopped tomatoes. Oh yes, this is what I was looking for. This guys, okay. When you're making a good curry, you need a nice coconut cream. But like a lot of spice, and that's fine, okay. If you're just a salt and pepper type of person, that's fine, go for the salt and pepper. But there is lots of benefits on having lots of different spices in your foods. Things like turmeric, for example, really good, lots of health benefits, as well as chili powder, black pepper as well. I make my own little garam masala mix. Oh, got a little bit stuck at the bottom there. Um, cinnamon, oh, love cinnamon. I go through a lot of cinnamon. And then we've got like just general little, uh, what is this sort of stuff? Stock pots. Um, this is some mushroom powder, um, some curry leaves. Just general stuff, really, just to make um, good food. Uh, tamari sauce, maple syrup, apple cider vinegar. Um, I don't really use a lot of oil, guys. I'm not going to lie. I tend to go for coconut oil. Or if I am making something that needs to be fried, um, I do use some rapeseed oil if I have to. But I don't really go too crazy on the oil, if I'm being honest. Okay, so on here. This used to be like our snack cupboard. I don't know what's happened. There is no snacks. Hmm. We have some oat cakes and rice cakes and more rice cakes and then loads of, ah, loads of baking stuff, basically. I just like to bake. This is basically crammed full of flour and sugars and there's more flour up there. Then we've got loads of different nuts that I've got probably uh, no space for as well as more goji berries and things. Oh, we've got some brown rice, um, probably some more puff quinoa, and I can see some dates up there as well. My subs, so we've got apple cider vinegar, flaxseed oil. We've got, well, if you haven't had this before, definitely recommend, really good, just for anxiety and overall health, really nice, and it does have uh, black pepper in as well. Vitamin C. Um, we've got these multivitamins, got more vitamin D, the classic CBD, B12, more B12, um, what else have we got in here, digestive enzymes, and I think that is just probably some more omegas, yes. Definitely recommend to get good quality supplements if you're going to use them. You don't have to, okay? This is not a must. This is just a little add-on, you know, a little top-up. Especially for me when I'm competing, I need to make sure that my body is getting all the vitamins, micronutrients um, that it needs. And, well, fruit bowl is not too bad. It's been better. It's not too bad. Um... Again, I would really recommend to make sure you've got lots of fresh fruit and veg available to you. So fruit bowls, there should be something to, you know, dot around your house to give you life, to give you vibrancy. Um, this pineapple really needs to be eaten. Textured vegetable protein chunks. These are crazy high in protein. And Michael's sister-in-law makes a really nice curry out of these and we are going to try to recreate it at some point. Yeah, protein, 44 grams per 100, so basically 40% protein, not bad. Here, which is basically just onions, garlic, and some potatoes there at the bottom. Always have lots of onions, garlic, and some ginger. Then this is the fridge. Fridge is not looking particularly packed, but there is only two of us, and we haven't been able to leave our house for the last uh, five days. So it is what it is. I soaked these two days ago. I need to cook them today. Chickpeas and some green lentils. Um, then we've got just some yogurt. Really important to make sure you've got something fermented in your diet. So preferably a yogurt is always a good choice. I'm actually starting to love the Tesco Free Farm Plain Yogurt. 
And then some butter, vegan block, shea coconut, rapeseed, almond. As you can see, it's not even been opened. Um, we tend to use it just for baking, to be honest. Hardly ever use that on anything else. Some tofu, really important to make sure you're getting enough protein, but fat in your diet. And this is a really good fat source for me. Uh, bio cultures, um, good for your gut health, gut flora, some cucumbers, some cabbage, that really needs to be cooked, oh dear. Um, and these are from the 27th of December. Wow, still going strong. Um, some tomatoes, some carrots, more carrots. I love carrots, I love carrots because you can just have them with hummus and they're crunchy and they're just nice and they also make really good juice. Uh, parsnips, those are definitely from Christmas, we'll probably be having them soon, still solid, going strong. Um, broccoli, spinach, corn on the cob, courgettes, <coughs> <coughs> damn, and some more carrots. Over here we've got a little bit of kombucha left with some mixers that we bought from Sainsbury's, some balsamic glaze, which is always good, tomato puree, guys, really good to use, this is just some aubergine in olive oil, vegan mayo, Michael's annoying hot, hot sauces that are just ghastly, uh, some more tamari, and some vegan pesto, which I need to freeze into ice cubes because we are not going to be using this yeah, within four weeks. Sorry, I'm the mustard and sauerkraut. No, this is kimchi, sorry. I also do buy the sauerkraut and then some more miso paste. So we've got here Michael cutting up some of the onions. We're using two white onions, one red onion, lots of garlic, ginger, um, for both of the chickpea curry. And then I'm just gonna make a nice, simple, well, brown lentil dal basically. <laughs> um, we might be adding in a side dish of teriyaki tofu, um, some red cabbage, probably a little bit stir-fried with some uh, mushrooms because these need to be used. They are still pretty good, so I don't want to throw them away just because it does say the 27th of December. Fun fact, mushrooms don't actually go off because they are actually a fungi. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> Thanks, babe. Hmm. Bit of caramelisation going on there. I'm not going to add any more oil either. That's it. So, half the ginger in one, half the ginger in the other, half the garlic, and half the garlic. Don't waste any of that garlic. Okay, cool. Like that. Saute a little bit more, we're going to turn it up, then we're going to add the spices, and then we're going to add the chopped tomato. Keep rolling. There you go. Spices here, we have um, some dry mustard, some cumin, turmeric, uh, some garam masala, some chilli powder, salt and pepper. And that is pretty much going to be enough for both as well. I am also going to add, actually, maybe some miso paste to the chickpeas just to add a little bit more of a, like a, I don't know, like a nice rich umami sort of flavour, comforting flavour, which I can't taste or smell right now, but it's fine. Tomato is each one. And it's been lovely, finely chopped by Michael, thank you. Wash my hands, always washing my hands, and my hands are hurting. Okay, we can see something is happening here now. I'm gonna turn it down slightly because I don't want it to dry out or burn. Yeah, nice. So this is where a little bit of water comes in handy. Now there's a, a lot of people that do cook with water. I would really recommend that, okay? Only because you do remove a lot of oil, a lot of fat content from loads of recipes just by sauteing in a little bit of water, like so. Done. 
does the job nicely. One half straight in there. And the other half in here. I'm going to add water again. Just a splash as we go. Just to keep things moving. So like I did say, I'm going to add some miso paste to the chickpea curry. And that's going to be the pink pot. So that should be more than enough. One teaspoon. It's quite salty as well, so do be careful with it. Especially if you're adding lots of salt. Okay, so tomato paste. Puree even. Okay, same thing really. I'm gonna go for Yeah, a nice heaped spoon. That should be enough. Yeah. Shall I do the same with the other? Yep. Yeah. Another heaped spoon. Right. Okay, we should be okay now to add everything else. So chickpeas going in first, they've been washed and they've been soaking for two days so they should cook fairly quick. Let's just mix this around. Oh wow, look at that colour. Caramelisation there. Ah, lovely. This is my favourite one. Mmm. Oh, the lentils. Oh, maybe not all. Nice. They're trying to escape. Basically. And there. Bingo. So enough to cover. You probably have about, I would say, an inch still there. And then we're just going to mix them. Okay. There you go. Enough water just to cover. Maybe just a little bit more, an inch or so. Uh, this is my favourite curry. Lovely. This is literally my favourite curry. That's a lot of lentils there, that's going to keep us going for... Well yeah, I, I weighed out 200 grams of nice. each. So 200 grams of chickpeas and 200 grams of brown lentils. And this is the amazing thing, like when you buy this sort of stuff in a carton or in a can, you know, you're not usually getting a lot, but it is quite expensive, you know, especially if wine organic. Um, but for this instance, I've measured out 200 grams of chickpeas and look how many lentils and how many chickpeas are in there. Nice. So we're going to let them both come to a boil. This one's nearly there. And then we're just going to place the lid, turn it down and let it simmer. If your chickpeas have been pre-cooked, you know, either in a can or in a carton, or if you've soaked them for two days like I have, so they should cook quite quickly. If not, obviously, taste test, make sure that they're soft um, and edible, uh, and they should be all right. An hour max, really. Quite happy with that. Both of these dishes are packed full of protein. Oh yeah, baby. Uh, protein. Another, another fun fact for you guys, uh, dal, or lentils, is the national dish of India. Mm. And it's the most consumed product in India, in terms of food anyway. Yes, dal is the best. Let's wait for them to boil and then we'll cover them. So I'm making rice really quickly. I know that there's lots of different ways to make rice. I personally like to add onions and I'm going to use some red onions. Just saute the red onions until you are satisfied that they are caramelised. I like to leave mine quite chunky because I like to have that chunky, oniony taste in my rice. Smashy rice, which I've rinsed straight in. Just enough to cover it and about an inch. So keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. There you go, done. That's more than enough water. So you don't want to put too much water because you don't want it to be mushy, obviously, but you don't want to add too little because you don't want it to burn. So make sure that you've mixed this around so there's nothing stuck to the bottom. And you'll probably see some of the oil come to the surface. Okay, 
I also do this with hot water as well, but I've learned to just add cold water. I mean, my mum cooks with cold water and her rice, and it's always the best rice. Everyone knows Leddy has the best rice. Lovely. So we're going to just let that come to a boil. Once it's come to a boil, you're then going to cover it, very important, and leave it to simmer. You want it to leave it to simmer for roughly, I would say, about 15, 20 minutes if you're making a portion for two to three people. If you're making a larger portion, then obviously it's going to be a little bit longer. Um, but just keep an eye on it. Just um, have a look and check and see how it's getting on. Uh, dinner. Well, that's Michael's. That teeny one is mine because I'm not very hungry. I've literally just woken up to have a Zoom session this morning and I've gone to wash my face and I've just realised that it is literally all over me, including my eyes. Um, I'm a little bit sore just all over, so Michael's decided he's going to call 111 just to get some advice because it seems to be pretty bad on my legs. Now it's kind of spread to my eyes. Um... I'm still going to do my Zoom session because um, apart from that, I still feel okay with myself, but yeah. I'm back. <laughs> kind of laughing about it now because I <laughs> talked to Michael and um, yeah, we just laughed about it, to be honest. I feel much better though. I don't have a temperature or anything, I don't think. I don't feel particularly hot. Um uh, still pretty much the same. I'm trying to leave my face alone and uh, just monitor it and make sure that it's not um, getting any worse. To be honest, I feel like it's got better in my eyes, so I'm just gonna. <laughs> um, I still did my Zoom sessions this morning and it gave me a little bit of energy, to be honest. It made me feel a little bit better in myself and. Yeah, my clients are amazing, man, because they're very positive, and I and I and I take that, I feed that, off, I feed off that. <laughs> um, I'm glad the fever is over. I'm glad that the body ache is over. Um, yeah, I just have to take it day by day and um, keep an eye on uh, my breathing, my, my temperature, and this uh, lovely rash I um, most likely will be having a shower um, followed by a nice hot bath to see if I can just soothe a bit of the itchiness and a bit of the soreness but I'm good guys um, obviously I got a bit scared before you know I woke up <laughs> I literally went to the toilet in darkness turned the light on to wash my hands and wash my face and was presented with this so um, obviously that's enough to shock anyone, uh, but yeah, feeling good, feeling positive now, and I just want to keep that, I want to keep that for the rest of the day as much as I can, so, well, the human body is just, it's special, it's amazing, it knows what it's doing, it's very clever, and I'm trusting that this skin rash or whatever is happening is just my body trying to expel something, so I'm just going to let it do what it needs to do. So yeah, I'll um, keep updating you guys probably now on Instagram. Um, and then I'm going to try and do a little bit more videos of recipes and things for vegan area going forward. You know, getting some content out that is valuable for people. You know, especially in a time like this where we should be looking after what we're eating. Um, yeah, so that's over and out from Maria. See you soon.